Some of you know, some of you don't. My name is Bill Hammond. I'm the new Miami Area Training Manager. Took over for, for a long time. Legend Bill Winstop. Mm -hmm. Welcome today to the GFRS St. Thomas University Campus Security Authority Training. What is Campus Security Authority? Clary Act history and overview. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the five W's of compliance. Other laws that we need to be aware of, that you need to be aware of as security officers on a university and campus, an institution of higher education. Possible scenarios and discussions. That's where I'm going to rely on you because you know this post. You know what you encounter every day. And just a little quiz, just off of the screen. I'm not going to make you actually take a quiz. Why is compliance important? We have to comply with the law, Title IX, and also the Clary Act. I'm going to talk about the Clary Act in detail in a couple minutes. Why is it important? The university can be fined up to $34,000 per violation. Withholding of all federal funding. That's the lifeblood of most universities and colleges here in the United States. There are legal fees. Legal fees are typically five to ten times more than the actual fines. That means once you get the lawyers involved, when all said and done and they send in their bills, that's just the beginning. And also, it's a fine per violation. Damage to institutional reputation, this is the most significant damage. Students leaving the school and donors choosing to give their monies elsewhere. The whole reason for the Clary Act was to make sure that parents and students, when they were choosing an institution of higher education, a college or university, one of the things that they're also wanting to check, besides academic requirements and everything else, is how safe the campus is. And if a campus gets a reputation for being unsafe, people aren't going to send their children there. What is the CSA? CSA stands for Campus Security Authority. It's defined under the Clary Act. And campus security authorities are required to report certain crimes. Who is the CSA? Campus police, campus security, Others with significant responsibility for a student in campus activities, all directors, residents, and assistants, coaches, advisors to clubs, and student organizations, students, student center staff. Whether or not someone is a CSA is determined by their role and not by their job title. It's what they do, not what they are. As a result, who is considered a CSA will vary from campus to campus. The goal is to capture the various campus officials a student may report a crime to. Interestingly, faculty are generally not considered CSAs. Professors, assistant professors, they're not really considered CSAs. We should not tell a school who, or who is or who isn't a CSA. They should determine that. But I can tell you this, security will always be Campus Security Authority. We are always going to be CSA. Okay, Clary Act. Clary Act is named after Jean Clary, 1966 to 1986. As you can see, she did not live a very long life. Jean Clary was a first year student at Lehigh University in Pennsylvania in 1986 when she was brutally tortured, then raped, then murdered in her residence hall room. It was the sort of crime that makes everyone recoil in horror and makes parents want to look their children in their house forever. Jean's, murder gained access, Jean's murderer gained access to her room through a series of doors that had been repeatedly propped open. 
Various staff at the school knew about the problem, but no one put the information together and fixed it. Gene's murderer was a student at the school with a history of drug abuse. He was looking for money to buy drugs when he found Gene sleeping in a room. He was later arrested and convicted and sentenced to death. Following Gene's murder, the family learned that there had been 38 violent crimes on Lehigh University campuses in the three years before her murder. Okay. In 1987, using money they received in a settlement with the school, Connie and Howard Clary, her parents, founded Security on Campus, or SOC. SOC is a not-for-profit watchdog group dedicated to safe campuses for college and university students. Connie and Howard believed their daughter's life could have been saved if they had been aware of other incidents of security issues on campus and immediately began advocating for campus crime awareness legislation. Pennsylvania quickly passed state legislation. To date, nine other states have passed their own reported, reporting laws at the state level. The Crime Awareness and Campus Security Act. Sure. The Crime Awareness and Campus Security Act of 1990 required for the first time that all post-secondary institutions participating in federal financial aid programs such as student loans and grants, disclose crime statistics and security policy. The act was amended in 1992, 1998, and 2000. The 1998 amendment, uh, amongst other changes, renamed the law the Gene Clary Disclosure of Campus Security Policy and Ca Campus Crime Statistics Act, the Clary Act for short. The law, along with other campus crime legislation, is now generally and collectively referred to as the Clary Act. With the passage of each amendment, the Clary Act became increasingly complex and burdensome. The Department of Education, the federal agency that oversees the law, gave schools inconsistent and occasionally contradictory information. In 2001, the American Council on Education called Clary mind-numbingly complex and recommended it be rewritten. The Education Department contracted a private company to write the Handbook of Campus Crime and Safety Reporting first published in 2005. Anybody seen this? You seen it? You guys have a, you guys have a copy here. All right? I recommend you read it. Make yourself familiar with it. If there's any questions on, on what to report and what not to report, or whether you should report it, you can probably find your answer in here. Everything we need to know is based on this. And I know I just talked to Captain Foster, you guys have a copy. So go right through it. This is what we've based this presentation on, is this handbook. When you got time, read it. It's a valuable resource for you. In 2008, Congress passed the Higher Education Opportunity Act, also known as uh, HEOA. The HEOA amended the Clary Act and established new requirements for missing student response, fire safety reporting, and the disclosure of campus disciplinary hearings re uh, results to victims of a crime of violence or sex offense. An updated version of the handbook, that right there, providing compliance information for the new requirements was published in the spring of 2011. The one I have, I pulled off the internet, this is the, the current 2016 edition, with all the current requirements, reporting requirements. Okay, every institution must collect and classify crime reports, issue alerts, and publish an annual crime report. Institutions with the campus security or police department must maintain a daily crime log. Institutions with on-campus student housing must disclose missing student and fire safety information. You already know this, and I do know that you guys do publish an annual security report, as I've seen it. Who's actually responsible for actually putting all the information together and publishing the report? Yeah. Right? There we go. And I've got a copy of the Can most current one. Yeah, just, just briefly so everybody's aware. I track all of the incident reports that are generated on campus. And I monitor them and keep track of all of the Clery violations. Um, you may have seen it on the uh, whiteboard in my office. 
and it's my responsibility to generate the Cleary statistics for a three-year period every year. So every year by October 1, I have to have compiled the statistics for the previous year and the two years prior to that. Now the two years prior had already been reported. So this past October 1, I um, put out the statistics for 2015. So the security report covers three years, 2015, 14, and 13. Next October, all of the incident reports from this year will be added in and will drop off 2013. So it's a three-year accounting of all of the crimes that are committed on campus. And it has to be filed with the Department of Education online. And also, it must be accessible. If anybody wants to see it, they can have the report. This is the report that's published every, every year. This is the entire report. Uh, have you seen this? Has anybody seen this? I'm sure Captain Foster has a copy of it. This is what is published by the university, and mostly with his input as security, that people can look at. It gives all the security procedures as far as it, it tells students what safety options are here. It talks about the blue light phones, talks about your role and how what, they, what support they can expect from you as security staff, talks about fire safety issues, the policy for missing students, if somebody calls up and says, when you see my roommate since Wednesday. All of all the information is in here. There is a policy. Please make sure that you are familiar with it. It's your responsibility. You remember what I said, the ones who had training with me? Knowledge is a tool. The more knowledge you have of your post, the more efficient and the better we can do our jobs. Learn this stuff, okay? That's why I gave everybody a hard copy of this presentation. And, Bill, and you can get a copy of this from the captain. I just wanted to interject. The crime log is maintained at the gatehouse. I update it periodically. I don't do it every day, but as we get more uh, incident reports, I maintain the original in my office, and there's a copy at the gatehouse. Anybody, student, family, faculty, staff, can request to see that crime log, and we have to have it available to them. So if somebody approaches you and you're in the gatehouse, don't say, well, I can't show you that, that's ours. That has to be available by this law to the public if they ask to review it, okay? Okay. Must have it, right? Collecting and classifying reports is an area that carries significant responsibility for us. The failure to meet this responsibility can result in significant fines, loss of the contract, and national embarrassment. Okay? So this is very, very important, very serious stuff. We're going to talk about the five W's of compliance. Who? What? When, where, and why. You're probably familiar with the 5W model. It's often used by police officers and journalists to help them remember the college report. You've all had my report writing class, so you know what we're talking about. Today we're going to use the same model to help us understand responsibility to collect these crime reports. Who reports? What's, a, what's reported? When's it reported? Where to report it? And why? Who collects crime reports? Campus Security Authority, that's us. Individuals with campus security responsibilities who are not part of the police or security department. Individuals designated by the campus. Individuals with significant responsibility for campus life who are likely to receive complaints from a crime victim. That could be the RAs, somebody at the front gate, well, in this case, you are at the front gate. Any official student responsible for student campus activities. This generally includes, but it's not limited to, coaches, advisors, student groups, resident advisors, the RAs, and a dean or other official supervising the aforementioned positions. 
Okay, so it may not just be a student coming up to report those. You may get an RA coming up and tell you, hey, I had, I had a student come up to me and is reporting this. So they have a responsibility to report it to you. They're more than likely are going to report it to you instead of going to the dean. They're going to say, oh, I need to let security know. Right? And obviously, that means you're going to have to do an investigation. You're going to have to notify Captain Foster. You have something you want to add, sir? Yeah. On this campus, uh, they have their own incident reporting system. It's called Maxient. And it enables anybody on the campus to do an incident report. So, when I put together the crime statistics for the previous year, I have to contact student affairs, I have to contact all the deans, I have to contact the athletic department, because not every crime is reported to public safety. We don't always get the incident report. Last night there was an incident and uh, the associate dean of student affairs was kind of uncooperative. He had taken control of the scene and was being very sparing with information. So that's one that we can't be responsible for in the practical sense, but it's one that I'm responsible for reporting. So every year I have to survey all of these people and say, is there anything, any Clery Act violation that I may not be aware of? And I have to make sure to include all of those stats in the uh, crime stats. Bill? Okay, thank you. Basically, since you know that you, by virtue of being security here at St. Thomas, you are a campus security authority, so anything reported to you, you must report. It must be included in the statistics. Captain Foster's responsibility as such supervisor is to collect it from the other CSAs which is, as he said, deans, RAs, coaching staff, things of that nature. But whatever is reported to you is considered part of the, of the stats. You always have to report. are included in the annual security report. However, you, we, should report everything. Let Captain Foster and the other supervisory staff, let them decide what actually is a Clary Act reportable event, uh, incident and what isn't. We, you, the security officers who's actually out there doing the job, report everything. Report everything. Doesn't matter if you believe it. Doesn't matter. Has to be reported. Be specific as possible. Just like you, you're gathering information in your notes to do an, an, an IR and incident report. Get all the information. Be specific. The location is important. While well, the specific crimes are included in the annual security report. We should report all crimes. Crime reports must be properly categorized, and this requires special training. We are not responsible for categorizing reports and should not even try. Our job, your job, is to provide the best report possible so the school can categorize the report. Document and report every crime that is reported to you. Don't assume it has already been reported. Oh, I'm sure the captain already heard about that. You document it. Don't assume someone else will do it. Failure to properly report a crime is a violation of federal law. Doesn't matter if you believe the report, you must document any crime. Your report should be as specific as possible. To help campus officials properly classify the incident, particular details should be paid to the following areas. Location and crime details. The primary responsibility of the campus security authority is to report allegations made in good faith to the reporting structure established by the institution. If you observe any of these crimes or if any person reveals to you that he or she learned or was the victim of perpetrator of or witness to any of these crimes, you are expected to immediately contact the security supervisor. If there is any doubt as to whether a crime is reportable, you should err on the side of reporting, reporting it. If you're not sure, report it anyway. Okay? Then you can't go wrong, right?
Okay, this is a list of criminal offenses to report on declaring. As stated earlier, we should report everything. That said, this list is, um, is and the following definitions are provided to be sure that everyone understands what these crimes are. Okay, you guys are trained security. Most of these you already know the, the definitions of. Murder, non-negligent manslaughter, okay? What is murder? It's the unlawful taking of a life. That includes second degree murder, where there was no intent to kill the person, but force was used enough to where the person did die. Negligent manslaughter, okay? Forcible sex offenses, non forcible sex offenses, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary. And remember, burglary is the entering of a building or a structure with the intent to commit a crime, any crime. Okay, a lot of people think burglar only means he want, they broke in to steal something. No, it's entering a building with the intent to commit a crime. Larceny being a crime, but assault is a crime. With the intent to go ahead and assault somebody or, or uh, sexually, battery somebody, sexually battery somebody. Burglary. And you don't have to break and enter to commit a burglary. You can go through an open door or a window. Motor vehicle theft, arson, stalking dating violence, domestic violence, hate crimes, violations of drug, liquor, or weapons law. Okay, violations of drug, liquor, and weapons laws. That's different than alcohol and drug campus policy. Okay, I don't know what those are. You guys do, it's your, your university. But I'm talking about drug and liquor laws. If there's a law against it, that's a crime, right? For instance, here in the state of Florida, is marijuana illegal? Yes. So that's a crime, right? If you catch somebody using it or possessing it, that's a crime. Is it legal for somebody under the age of 21 to possess and consume alcohol? Yes. Okay, that's a law, right? Yes. And there may be other policies, okay? Is there a policy, is there, and I'm not sure I'm asking you guys, is there a policy about having alcohol in the dorms by anybody, whether they're 21 or older? There is an age limit? Okay. Okay, is there is there an amount or anything, limit or anything like that, or do they just have a keg in their room? Not a keg, no. Right? Okay. Those well, are not that would be a policy, right? Yes. But the law would be somebody under the age of 21 having alcohol in their room, right? Okay, that would be a violation of law. Having a keg in a room may be a violation of campus policy, but not law. We're talking about reporting violations of the law. All right. Forcible sex offenses, any sexual act, when done by force or done against the person's will, or the person is incapable of giving consent, means that they're passed out, or they're so much under the influence, even though they're able to respond to simple questions, they're not able to give legal consent. Non-forcible sex offenses, incest, statutory rape. We all know what statutory rape is, right? Okay. And actually, it's it's no, here in the state of Florida. It's sixteen. Yeah. It's sixteen. It's sixteen. Yeah. Okay. Right. Wait. How is seventeen and twenty-four? Is something seventeen and twenty-three is the seventeen following that. Right. Statutory? I thought it's six. I think if it's yeah, sixteen think it's and older, it's not. It's not statutory. If it's no, if it's seventeen older, it's not statutory. If it's sixteen and older, it's statutory. Sixteen is statutory. But again, it depends on on the on, on the age ages the ages involved. Involved. Okay. Mm -hmm. a, se a a seventeen year old in a relationship with a with a nineteen year old, that's okay. But a seventeen year old having a relationship with say I don't know a person who is fifty six, that's not okay. That's actually a violation of law. How is incest non-forcible? It can be forced. Incest. Um, well, if it's forced, then what's it called? Right. If it's forced sexual contact, what's it called? It's rape. Rape, okay. Well, why do you list it under Because time? it's possible <clears throat> that a person could give their consent to that relationship. Yeah. Ooh. It happened in Tampa. It's a lady fighting for it now. Mm -hmm. What's well, married? It's son, it, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is. It is yeah. possible. Yeah. It is possible because remember the violation is the fact that they're blood related. That's what makes it incest. Okay. The violation. The violation of law. 
the violation is that they are they are closely blood related. That's what makes it a violation. Consent's not a, a, an issue there. If if that if that was the case, if there's no consent, well, yeah, that's rape, right? right? That's sexual battery. I don't know why I was listening. Okay. I was thinking of robbery. That's something committed in the presence of the victim and force or threat, and something of value is taken. That means they robbed you of your wallet. They robbed you of your car or your stereo. You were there. They broke into your room. Give me your stereo, or I'm going to hurt you. Give me your wallet. Give me your handbag. That's robbery. Aggravated assault. Attack for the purpose of inflicting severe bodily harm or injury. Doesn't necessarily have to have a weapon involved. Okay? Can you hurt somebody severely and hospitalize them just using your fists or your feet? Right? Burglary. Unlawful entry, whether by force or not, into a structure, four walls, a roof, and a door does not include automobiles. Purpose for committing a felony or theft, regardless of the success. Remember, it says felony or theft. They can go in there for the purposes of assaulting somebody. Okay? That would be con considered burglary. Motor vehicle theft. Theft or attempt to theft of vehicle must be the whole vehicle, not just items from inside. Arson, the willful or malicious burning of a house, public building, motor vehicle, personal property of another, etc. It also includes the attempt to burn. All right? Girlfriend's mad at her ex-boyfriend. She throws his clothes out the window and then goes downstairs and pours lighter fluid over it, right? She's getting attempting to burn it, right? You, you stop her before she sets the match to it. But that's attempted arson, right? Because she showed intent, right? By pouring the lighter fluid over it, she wasn't using it as starch, right? Okay. She even had bed bugs on it. Yeah? Isn't that when bed bugs is the burner, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know about lighter fluid. <laughs> <laughs> she was, she didn't know how to clean. She thought that's how you. Oh, uh, okay. Stocking. Now these, here, now we're getting, now we're getting in, in, in the, the offenses you may encounter here on campus. Okay? Assaults, right? But stalking. Two or more acts, directly or indirectly, or through a third party. That could be directed at a specific person and would cause a reasonable person to fear for themselves uh, or suffer emotional distress. Dating violence. Violence committed by a person who is or has been in an intimate or romantic relationship with the victim. It's classified as dating violence if they were dating or they had just broken up. They had had a relationship. Okay, that's in addition to it being the regular crime of assault. If it was if it was perpetrated on their boyfriend or girlfriend, then it's considered dating violence. Okay. Now, I would assume that you guys have had some experience here with stalking and dating violence. Is, have there been incidents that you guys know of here on campus? Yeah. Okay. Maybe okay. yeah, dating, dating violence. violence. Mm -hmm. Or stalking with dating violence. I think a couple of a while. We've had some stalking as well. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 I don't know. I wasn't wrong. No, it was girls and girls. Remember that group of girls? Yeah, and there were, we had uh, a couple out uh, of the, the law day. school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the law school had a couple. Yeah, yeah. we've had them. Sometimes they'll tell you, but they kind of like don't want you to know, oh, that's my ex-boyfriend, but we're just trying to work it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. we're going to talk about that. What I was going to say, right? Two lines. What, if, what if the person's delusional? And it's still stalking. What is it? It is you still don't know, so right. It is still stalking. I'm not, that that is actually saying. a classification of stalking. There is delusional. There is a stalking of somebody who won't take no for an answer or will right. realize that, that yeah. it's over, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's also mm -hmm. there is also delusional. Mm -hmm. okay. We're just talking. Let us talk. And she like y'all talking. There is delusional. I tell a story in my class where a woman had been stalked 
woman had been stalking. She had no clue. And this guy had been following her for six months. And she had no clue. She had no clue. Oh, that's a lie. The devil's a lie. She had no clue. Six months and she didn't know nothing? No. He had been following her to work, was waiting for her when she left work, knew where she lived. She's oblivious to life. No, she, she but you know how you know how he fixated on her? He was sitting at a bus stop one day and she walked by and he goes, That's my wife. We're in love. And then he, he was obsessed with her from that point on. Oh, whole he just he, she, she did, all she Yes. She didn't feel the hair on the back of her neck stand up. Listen, but Christ follow me too long. If I'm making a left turn, you make a left turn, I'm a That's right you. Turn. That's you. That's not everybody. That's you. The hair on the back of your neck don't stand up. But that's not everybody. <laughs> Domestic violence, any person who physically assaults, threatens, harasses, or interferes with personal liberty or, or of another. It includes family members, people who are married or used to be married, previously dated or currently dating, or they have a child in common, or they share or have shared a household, ex-roommates, okay? If they had some type of domestic connection, that would be classified as domestic violence. We'll also have to report hate crimes. Hate crimes are crimes motivated by the offender bias. Officers must document if a, if a crime is a hate crime or shows evidence of being a potential hate crime. This is important. Examples include hateful writing or symbols, hate speech spoken while committing a crime or while being interviewed, These are the biases. These, these are the biases that Clary recognizes as potential hate crime biases. Disability, ethnicity, gender, gender identity, national origin, race, religion, and sexual orientation. Okay? So if you if you got if you got two students that get into a mutual a mutual fight, right? And one of them starts throwing racial epithets of at one another, right? Or calls them the F-bomb the, the F or whatever, yeah, that may be a hate crime. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you have to you have to be aware of this dimension. You've got to ask yourself, is there a hate crime going on here? What was said? Right? If you're not sure, report it. If you're not sure, but report that dimension to it. Report if there was epithets thrown. Would you like if they both the one? They both are arguing and fighting. Wait. Yeah, but it's a different because I, I mean I think one of the hardest one was um, where I saw where these two gay guys were fighting, but one gay guy just I guess wouldn't admit that he was all the way gay and he kept calling the other one bum 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 and he was calling the other one because he kept using the hate word. He just said little 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 and they taught him the hate crime. But I'm like, they both are. They, they're, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not that they both are. I'm just saying, like, they're both arguing. They're in a, in an argument or a disagreement. If you take you good take notes, if you take good notes, house. if you take good notes and document everything to include what was said or what was written, you take good notes, then, we, then when those reports are reviewed, they can make a determination. I think we have evidence of a hate crime here. Okay, that's the importance of you as the officers taking good notes. Report everything. Okay, what did you, what did you see, sir? All right, do you, did you hear him say anything? What did they say? Can you tell me? Right, and then they can determine. If you take good notes for your reports, then they can they'll have that information, and then the determination can be made whether or not it was a hate crime. Okay, so always take good notes. If something was scribbled on somebody's wall, right? This is what you get for being, as she said. An F, right? Definitely. Okay? Race and religion, sexual orientation, national origin. Also, additional crimes report if hate is evidence. Larceny, theft, it was motivated by hate, simple assault, intimidation, if it was motivated if it was motivated by hate, or it appears that it was motivated by hate then these would be reported as hate crimes. Larceny, theft, simple assault, intimidation, vandalism.
Now, don't get lost in the minutia of the law. Don't get lost in the details. Emphasize that officers are not responsible for classifying crimes, only proper do properly documented. Prompt reporting of all crimes, along with well-written reports, will give an institution the information they need to classify the crime. Okay? At your levels, good report writing. You have my report writing class, right? So you know what's expected, correct? Okay. At your level, write the report. Give a very detailed report with good information, and then they're able to make the determination at a higher level. Okay? Simple as that. Finally, officers must report all violations of drug, alcohol, and weapons laws. Law is different than campus policy. Be as specific as possible. Familiarize yourself with both not only the campus policy on alcohol and possession of weapons and drugs on campus, but also the laws. Okay? What to report? Let's consider geography here. Now, as I, my discussion with Captain Foster is, now the, the entire campus is enclosed, right? Okay, nice, that nice fence completely around. That means you can, anything that happens on the inside of that fence or right there in, at the entrance, that's reportable, okay? If there is any off-campus facilities, anything that happens there. Are there any off-campus uh, classrooms they have a downtown, or satellite? A downtown campus. They have a downtown campus. Is that reported by the through us? By us okay. Well. According to Clary, is it in a building or a shopping center? You know, I don't even know. Okay. We we haven't might, we haven't had any incidents. You might want to check that because according to Camp to Clary, according to the law, say it's in the third floor of a building, right? The classrooms are in the third floor of a building. According to Clary, you would report. If that, if that building has a designated parking lot, you would report anything that happened in the parking lot to a student. The lobby of that building, the elevators and stairwells up to the third floor, and the third floor itself to include the classrooms. That's actually reportable under Clary. Here, you guys are good. Anything that happens inside, okay? But also, are there any breaches in the fence? Or, or is there a place where it's traditional for students to jump Jump the fence to sneak in? Mm -hmm. Is there? No. Well, they can. They can, but no. They they can. Can. They they can. Can. You got, do you guys, you guys patrol the perimeter, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, if you patrol it, obviously that would be any violation or anything you report. If you see part of the, that, that perimeter damaged or need a repair, that's reported and corrected, right? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the reason why. With the report, missing students. In addition to the crimes discussed, officers should promptly report and document the following. The Higher Education uh, Act created new missing student notifications, regulations for schools with on-campus housing. In very general terms, all missing students must, uh, must be re referred to the campus police or security department. If the student lives in on-campus housing and is determined to have been missing for 24 hours, the institution is up to 24 hours after receiving the report to initiate the notification procedures. Okay, is, is that an issue? Has that been an issue here in the past? It has been, but it's not our determination or our responsibility to notify the parents of uh, missing students. The university does that exclusively. Okay, and they will also, who would contact uh, the law enforcement if it's determined? that they need to file an official... Exam. The university would decide when to bring in law enforcement. Okay. All right. So if you were to hear something, uh, if one of your officers were to hear, hey, we can't find my roommate or whatever, then you would have to report to the university and they would make the determination when it would be a missing person. Yes. Okay. Fires. Fires in residence halls also has the, uh, specific reporting requirements. Document the fire in detail as you would a crime. 
Also, we must maintain a fire log similar to the daily crime log that lists all reported fires and on-campus doing housing. We're in compliance with that? Absolutely. Okay. Publishing an annual fire safety report, which is part of the security report. You have a section in there for that. Okay. And they also have to submit statistics. You have to report it. One classification of fire, right? If a fire is reported to a G4S security officer, they should first initiate emergency response. Go check it out if you can, you know, you make sure that that fire has been reported in 911 if it's necessary, or make the attempt to extinguish it. Grab that fire extinguisher, make the notifications, what have you. At an appropriate time after the emergency is over, the officer should document the incident in detail. You all know that. That's standard practice for us. Anything out of the ordinary is considered an incident and we're going to report it, correct? And write a report on it. When to report, report crimes promptly. If a crime is in progress, call 911. If it's a continuing theft, report immediately. After the fact, notify campus officials in accordance to closed orders. You're trained on how to respond to, to crime, right? That's part of the post orders and training? Okay. Where? Where do you report here at St. Thomas? Who gets your reports? The captain. The captain, okay. Make sure that you get all the copies. If you're not sure whether or not you need to do a report or what to do with the report once you wrote it, Whoever the shift supervisor is, give it to them and let them make the determination and get it to Captain Foster. Okay? Again, when in doubt, report it. When in doubt, write it out. Okay. Before Clary, before the Clary incident, few schools reported crime to systems. An informed crime, uh, campus makes better decisions. This creates a safer campus. Now remember, here are the penalties. If you violate the Clary Act, or if the university violates the Clary Act, and since we are a contractor for the university, we're responsible too. Up to $35,000 per violation. Loss of all federal funding. All federal funding. Grants, scholarships, everything. The legal cost, damage to reputation. There must be over there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're going to talk about other laws that St. Thomas is, is responsible for the jurisdiction of. There's FERPA. The Family Education Rights and Privacy Act is a federal law that protects the privacy of students and their educational records. FERPA has three general requirements. Students have the right to review their educational records. Students have the rights to, con to contest records they believe are inaccurate. Educational records may only be shared with those having a legitimate educational interest or otherwise specified under law. A health and safety clause allows relevant information to be shared with appropriate officials in an emergency. That is not made at your level, that determination. Okay? If anybody comes up to you and asks for student information, refer them to your supervisor and they'll refer them to the appropriate campus officials. Okay? That includes, hey, which dorm does Mary live in? I'm looking for Mary. She's a good friend from high school. Can you get information out? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not, right? You can't say, you know, okay, I know I can't go in the dorm, but what? I'll just wait for her out here. What? What? What's her car? What's her car look like? Can you get information out? No. Okay. And even if it's allowed, it's not our place to, to give it. Let let campus faculty decide that. Captain Foster, you have anything next? Yeah. Uh, regarding FERPA, FERPA is a very strict um, guideline. For disseminating information. There are times that even the parents of students are not entitled to have certain information about their academic record or their um, disciplinary record here on campus. Uh, so just like 
our incident reports, we don't disseminate anything to anybody off campus. Our incident reports don't go out, and you all know I get all kinds of requests. Oh, can I get a copy of the report? Not without a, a subpoena. So uh, just realize, we're contractors, and the university makes these decisions. That's why uh, they have a risk manager and they have people in administrative positions to make those kinds of decisions. We're not allowed to give anybody any information. So just keep that in mind. And I always say after hours when they come and ask, refer them to Captain the next morning. Call them the next morning. Call yeah. speak to Captain Foster. Because sometimes we have, remember we have a parent say, oh, I didn't talk to my daughter in two days and I know she's here and she's not answering me. So I need y'all to go and get it for me. And I was like, unfortunately, we can't do that. And she was like, I'm going to call the police and send the police here. The girl didn't want to speak to her mom. I knew it because I had seen her earlier. And she said, I don't want to talk to you because they didn't tell me they were coming down here from New York or somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the mom called the police and the police was like, well, we can't make them let you on campus because your daughter had to make the decision. But she answered her in text mm -hmm. so she knew she was somewhere. But the mom was really upset and said she was going to write a complaint because we refused to let her in. But it was up to the student. She didn't want to see it. Don't be intimidated by people saying they're going to write a complaint. If we're doing our jobs, and we're doing our jobs the way we're supposed to, the complaint will never come back to hurt us. What will hurt us if we get creative and decide, well, this is a parent, I can let the parent on campus, or I can, you know, you're making a guess. You're not an expert in FERPA. You're not an expert in any sense of the law, neither am I. And it's not our determination to make those decisions. So when in doubt, refer them to me. And believe me, when I'm in doubt, I know who to go to. And it won't be me. Many years ago, we had a parent who came in and his son with a gun. And the that was that before the fencing went up? We had the fencing. Okay. We had, ever since I've been here, I didn't hear what she said. Oh, she said that they had a, an incident where a, a parent came in and threatened their their student with a weapon, with a gun. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, that was a while back. I was in a judicial hearing just this week, and Richard brought up an incident. Richard is the uh, uh, associate uh, vice president of student affairs. And he brought up an incident where uh, a student was under uh, discipline and the father actually came on campus and assaulted the student. Beat him That's probably what it was. Yeah. Beat him pretty badly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that, that's why we don't make incident. those determinations. Okay, let me go ahead and continue here. Let me go ahead and continue. Now, we know about FERPA, and you're probably familiar, you've, I know you've heard this. Title 10, or excuse me, Title 9. Title 9, no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Schools have an obligation to respond to sexual uh, harassment and violence. They've included this now. Everybody thinks about sports, but any Title IX. Title IX covers all campus activities. Okay? Schools have specific procedural requirements now pertaining to sexual harassment and sexual violence. Schools must report, must take steps to prevent sexual harassment and sexual violence and to correct the discriminatory effects on the complaints of others. You guys do that by doing your jobs, which is observing and reporting, by maintaining good access control, by being observant and being proactive when you're on patrol, right? By letting people know that you're out there to keep them safe. If you interact with the students and they know that you're here to do a professional job and they know they can come to you, that will help a lot, stop a lot of this, okay? Be curious as to when you're on patrol. Be curious. 
Who are those people? What are they doing over here? You know? Just you don't have to be paranoid about it or accusatory, but just go up and, and make sure you know. Okay? I'm sure every every semester people will meet and they'll hang out over here, they'll hang out at a particular uh, table, picnic table or whatever. Get to know those groups. The more you know, then you know what's what's normal and what's out of place. Be curious. Not just don't do your patrol and say, okay, I didn't see nothing broken or stolen or on fire or I didn't find any blood. Be curious about everything you see so you know in your own mind what is normal at this in the, in the context of, of this campus and what isn't. Just general overall security. All right. 2012, the state of Florida passed the Florida Vulnerable Persons Act. Under the law, every individual in the state is required to immediately report known or suspected child abuse and child sexual abuse to the Florida Department of Children and Families Abuse Hotline. With the definition of child including any person under the age of 18, this includes reporting suspected abuse committed by adults who are not the child's legal guardian and by juvenile sex offenders. You have some underclassmen here when they come here are 17. That's child abuse, not just sexual se child sexual abuse, but abuse, but abuse in general. Somebody getting assaulted that's under the age of 18, that's going to have to be reported. Okay, it may be reported. That also includes statutory crimes. Failure to report no instances of child abuse of any kind is a third degree felony punishable by up to five years of prison and up to $5,000 fine. In addition, the failure of a university administrator to report suspected abuse potentially exposes the university to up to a million dollar fine. It's a big deal. The reason why the state of Florida passed this is you had a lot of people, not so much in an academic environment, but you had families, you had blended families, and it was the stepfather who was abusing. And the, mother, the wife, didn't want to report it because that was the meal ticket, that was, that was the source of support for the family. So they weren't reporting it and, and, and it just went on and on and on and on. Now it's a crime. If a next door neighbor suspects that there's child sexual abuse or child abuse going on next door, they have to report it. Okay? People have lost their parental rights over this stuff because they failed to report it. Any suspicion of child abuse should also be immediately reported to the campus president through the normal channels. This is a very, very big deal. All right, let's have a little scenario real quick here. Student approaches you, Stacy wants to report a crime. Before giving you any information, he asks you to promise not to tell anyone. What do you do? Don't make promises you can't do. Don't make promises you can't keep? Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? I'm not, I won't be able to promise you that I won't tell anyone, but I will be, I will be, dis, I will be discreet. No. Okay. We just want to tell him yes, and then you say, you tell him yes. Can't promise you yes. What's that? Can't promise you know, You can't. No, this is what you said. Try this. Try this. Explain that you're required to report the crime. Tell them, hey, there's a law. The law. I am legally bound to report the crime. Well, we can but we promise, can but, 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 though. no, but, tell them that you are legally required to report the crime. But you can't promise to tell the minimum number of people. Okay? You, you can promise that. Hey, I'm only going to tell those people who need to know. Right? I'm not going. I'm not going to spread it all over the campus. But I am. Tell them I'm legally bound. The law says I have to report it, but I can't keep it up to a minimum of people. What if he chooses not to tell you? Then he doesn't. Then you notify. Then you notify your supervisor. Hey, I th I think somebody should interview this kid. He didn't he didn't disclose what it was, but there's something, right? I would require the. Can he be anonymous? Can he be? Well, his his identity I mean, can be kept confidential. But that decision is not made by by us. Okay, right. we can't guarantee that he can be that it can be anonymous. Okay, but it's not anonymous because you know who he is, right? right? If he comes up to you, right, you can guarantee him confidentiality. 
But you, you know, right? You can promise that. But it, like, let them know, hey, if that decision is not going to be made by me, but yes, they do take into consideration. Tell them, yeah, it's going to be kept confidential. We're not going to broadcast it, okay? Yeah, but let them know that that the law says, hey, I have to report this, okay? Yeah. All right. And you, oh, we're going to keep it confidential. We're not going to broadcast this out. Don't worry about that. I never do. Okay. Yeah, we don't. We just happen. Okay. Question number one. What is the campus security authority? Yes. Yeah, see? What is CSA? Is it Computer Security Administrator? Is it C Campus Security Authority? Uh, Mr. Hammond needs more copy. All right, true or false? The G4S security officer working on a college or university is a CSA. Are we always going to be a CSA? Yes. Yes. CSAs are only required to report crimes if they believe the reporting party. True or false? False. False. Whether or not we believe does not matter. Report it. We do not investigate. Correct. A well-written report will give the exact location of where an incident occurred. True or false? Exactly. G4S security officers should be prepared to share information designated as public under FERPA. True or false? True. Isn't that false? We don't make anything public under FERPA. No, 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 no. No. It is false. false. We don't. It is yes, false. We don't. It is not our place to share student information with the public. No. Directly requesting party to a campus official. Now it may be allowable under FERPA, but the, but this is us. We don't make that determination. It's not our job. It's not our responsibility. Okay. So you direct them to campus administration, right? Okay. We are not going to give them that. Okay. <laughs> Title IX. <laughs> Title IX. Are we back over here? Yes. All right. Title IX addresses what? Sexual harassment and violence, minimum lighting standards for campus, campus fire response, or the NBA draft process? <laughs> A. A. It shouldn't be D. Yeah. <laughs> And that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, are there any questions? No. Okay, the takeaway from this is report everything. If you're unsure, write it down, report it. They'll make, he will make the determination. This means to do our basic function as security officers, observe and report. Observe, be curious, okay? And if you're doing your job, if people perceive us as being professional, they're going to come up and they're going to be more comfortable with telling you things. All right? That's all I really got to say. That, and when you're out there, be safe, please. Okay? All right? Because I also have to review the accident reports, and that's a pain. That's all I got. Thank you very much for your attention.